high place this morning. Will you be the high place? We declare you are Lord over our lives, Father, over this city, over our families, Father, over this state, over this nation. We just say Jesus is Lord in this earth. give you honor this morning. Father, we thank you that when we've come together today that you're speaking and that we have ears that hear and that your word uh, breaks breaks off those things that binds us. He says you set the truth of your word would set a captive free. Father, I thank you for freedom today reigning in this place on every front. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and grab a chair this morning. We're going uh, to receive our tithes and offerings this morning. And uh, I'm Pastor Nate. So good to be with you guys this morning. You online as well. Um, I want to take just a moment uh, and share something. We actually just came back from camp. We had 50 people, uh, you know, over in Oklahoma t- this last week uh, just being taught the Word. So many young kids. Uh, just, a, man, just God showed up in amazing ways. It was so, it, was, it, more than, it wasn't sensational. It was just so, it was transformation. It took, but it was deposits that allowed uh, application and ways to live by. You know what I'm talking about? Just, it was just supernatural. Brother Copeland, uh, Kenneth Copeland, actually uh, taught 300 kids uh, with all the kids. We're talking in a room about about this big. 300 kids. The stage would be up here, and there's 300 kids sitting on the floor, hooked up for two and a half hours till 10:30, uh, and it was just the Lord. I've been telling you, just the hooked up, great impartation great impartation and so I just want to take this next four minutes because um, I feel like uh, every every, just in this time I think uh, in which we're living uh, there's a lot of voices right and um, and and I believe that the Lord uh, just as he designed he puts it in in the church he puts gifts and uh, they are for the the people of God right so that they can carry out the works of ministry one of those gifts is a pastor and that's an office that I stand in and so there's things that, that by the Spirit of God, uh, that, that He would lead or t- to shepherd the people. And, uh, and so I want to take about four minutes. I know that we have a guest minister here, but I think this is necessary and important. So I want to just take a moment. So if you have your notepads, I want you to get them out or your phones, because I think this is really important, what I'm about to share with you. Um, and I believe it will help you navigate today, tomorrow, the days ahead. And um, navigate them from victory. Right? With a confidence on the inside, with a strong heart. Right? A strong heart. That's what God's desire for you is to have a strong, strong heart. And maybe you've heard, heard this before. You might write this down. Uh, author, there is no author or implementation without authorization. How many of you have ever heard that? Like there is no implementation without authorization. In other words, you, it, it, it cannot be brought about until it's authorized. And that, that's true in our lives. It's true in our lives. The authority has been given to you. You what what and what's going on right now is there are there are stories being written before you. There's a story being written right now. And 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 stories are written or they're authored with words. Okay? And and words, it's it's amazing. Um, and, and there's two, there, and I'm gonna put up here first John uh, four here in just a moment. But these stories, um, there's two different authors. There's the author that is the Lord, and the, there is the author that is the enemy, Satan. Okay, they're, they're both they both author, they both use words. Okay, the difference is Satan talks about the picture that's either displayed before you okay he talk, he he he's really he's he's a picture book reader this is how this is his plan he's like the elementary baby kids you know and he just he talks about the pictures to you but god when he speaks he creates the picture 
This is like even what you're saying, we're singing this morning. You reign above it all. You reign above it all. You're saying, it doesn't look like it. He didn't say to, to, to look, at what you, look at what you see around and say what that. He says, speak those things that are not as though they are. You reign above every heart. Well, it doesn't, they don't reign above that heart. They don't reign above this heart. They don't reign. How about you make a declaration and you, you let the word of God create the story and create the picture. This is how God worked from the very beginning. The earth was without form and void. That is a very much a fact. But God said, but God said. Now, I want you to see this in 1 John chapter 4. And this is, we're going to hit just this 1, one through 4. 1 John 4, 1 through 4. And it says, dear friends, dear friends, uh, do not believe every spirit. Do not believe every spirit. And this word spirit, uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty neutral. It speaks of, uh, it, unless it has Holy Spirit or Spirit of God, it, the, the, the word is called, it's pneuma in the Greek. And it, it speaks of life or that which gives animation to something. Okay? So there can be a spirit, which in verse 4, of the Antichrist or of Satan that would animate our lives, that would bring life and a picture to how we live our lives. Or, or we could have the Spirit of God, and it would animate and bring application in, in our lives. Here's what he says, though. Do not believe every spirit. The same word spirit, pneuma, means this breath. And so I would ask you this, and I ask the kids this. Who's breathing on you? It's important to know who's breathing on you. He says, but test the spirit. So you could say, test the breath. Is it bad breath? Is it good breath? What are the results? What's the fruit of the breath? Is it depression? Are we, is it frustration? Is it fear? Is it, I don't know what to do? I don't, I don't know what we're supposed to be doing in these times. I mean, like, ah, I just had a loss. I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss. You're listening to the wrong breaths. And we have said this, what you're led by or fed by, you will be led by. You're, you're, there are certain breaths or the author, okay? Because we talk about origins of words in the Greek and Hebrews, but even more important than the origin is the author. Because the author has a, a, an intended or an outcome to the story that he would love for you to read and you to authorize, there is no implementation. All authority is given to you. Your choice, what you choose, what you let in, what you authorize can be imp implemented in your life. So it's so important that you test the spirits. Test the breaths. What you're listening to, what you're seeing on Facebook, what you're talking about. What, what, what you, when you start talking, it's just crazy out there. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. We're talking about what the enemy's working on, or are we talking about what God's doing and what he's saying? I'm telling you, we can, be, we, we can begin to narrate, and we can, he says, it's kind of like these, uh, these ad lib things where they start the story, and they just let you finish it. Listen, if you listen to the wrong breath, the story, listen, it'll start and you'll finish it right along with what he'll, he'll leave you to yourself. But here we go. He says, test the breaths, test the spirit, and see whether they are from God. Like, so there are breaths that are not from him, and they're all over right now. And right now, they're go, it's like never before. There's a great, there's a great clashing in the heavens. And the, we the weapon, there, so there's a war going on. And here's the deal. In Ephesians chapter 6, the only weapon that you see given to the church, that when Paul talks in Ephesians 6, is a sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Let me tell you, he's not going to give you a sword if he's fighting with something else. There's a sword because there's another sword going back and forth. This sword, you understand what I'm saying. When the sword comes out, the other person draws the sword. It's not like he's got a machine gun. You understand? And so the words are, is what the battle is. The battle is in the spirit realm, but it is about the words. It is about the breaths, and it's about you implementing or authorizing so he can implement his plan here on this earth. Both Satan and God need your choice, and your choice is released by your voice. 
Let me finish th- th- this, and I'm, I'm almost done right here. So this, we're just basically reading because many false prophets, those speaking for God, uh, have gone out into the world. Next verse. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Here's what I would say, a very simple way, that Jesus is Lord. That the authenticity of who he is, the authenticity, flesh, the, the authenticity, the, 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 it really happened. This word, of, this word right here is really true. You can build your life upon this. It's, I mean, this is what he's saying. That the, the Jesus came, the, the reality of everything that you're holding in your hand is true. That's what he's saying. But every next verse, it says that everyone that does not acknowledge this, every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is, uh, is from God, this is the spirit of the Antichrist. So there's Christ and Antichrist. There is heaven and hell. There is light and dark. It's not just natural. It's not just man. All of flesh, the only reason even our body and the sin in this world is the result of the fall or the result of anti-God or Satan, the divide. Which you heard, he goes on to say, this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and is even now already in the world. It's already here. It's been working. Next verse. I think it's the last verse right here. You dear children. Hey, friends. You're of God. You're from God, and you've overcome them. Here's why. Because greater is he that's in you, the spirit, the breath of God in you, is greater than all the breath around you. And so it's so key right now that you would listen to the breath within. And the breath within, or His breath, and the Bible says the the children of God are led by the Spirit of God. The Bible says that the the children of God, or or the Spirit of man, uh, is the candle of the Lord. The way that He leads man is here. But guess what? God's Word is Spirit. If you're going to be led from the inner man, you're going to have to give ear to that author. Rather than everything else that's going on, because there are, author, there are some things, implementation, there's no implementation without authorization. There are some things that need to be implemented in your life and in my life. There's some things, that there's some application, there's some doing that God has for you and God has for me. And so you could take this last five minutes and you could put it in a nutshell. Who is breathing on you? When when it comes to your finances, when it comes to your family, when it comes to whatever, who's breathing on you and and, and, and allowing to paint the picture or the story of your life? Man, God has a good story for you. That he wrote the end from the beginning, and he wants you to partake in the story that is called good news, the gospel. Amen? So just to, to maybe take, take a couple of those notes and just ask yourself, take some inventory. Take some inventory, even with your wife today, later today, with your family. Talk with your children. This is called training. And ask what you've been hearing lately. If depression is on your, or suicidal thoughts, who's the, who's the spirit? You don't have to, I mean, that, that's, that, that's, that's bad breath bad breath. Amen? Amen. All right, so there's that piece. I just think it's it just really, really necessary. I want to take a moment right now, though, and receive our tithes and offerings. Um, and actually, uh, if you'll throw up uh, the Romans, uh, Romans 10, 15, it says, how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. And this morning, what a blessing. Um, we have a, a missionary couple uh, with us this morning. And, you know, at Beyond Church, one of the things, it, the arrow, you know, get the message out to know him and to make him known. And that's what we're doing here. And this is why we're coming into partnership with, with, uh, with missionaries and people that are carrying the message of the gospel beyond these four walls uh, worldwide. From this place, the, 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 we will reach the nations. And, uh, and, and so, Ken, if you, uh, Brother Ken and, and, Ta- and Tanya, if you guys come up, and Ed, will you come up? Oh, yeah. I'd love for um, you to share a little bit about your website um, and what you got, the initiative that's going on, and, um, and say hello uh, and all that good stuff. Hello. <laughs> what a blessing to finally get to be here with you. And um, 
to know him and to make him known. We all have a part in that, don't we? And you guys are doing your part really well. We were so blessed to be with the pastors last night and, and, and for dinner, and we were with seven on-fire young men, and they're doing their part well. And we're just so blessed. Anyway, I'll let Ken talk. Yeah, so you want to... Uh... You want to just t- talk a little bit about the your website and the the thing the I initiative? Can. Yeah, just I've for got some pictures to show uh, for that. Do you want to do that right uh, now? No, let's just go ahead and do this. Yeah, if you have any pictures to show for that, that's great. But just real quick. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, the thing is, we were here in November and shared with you that time. I saw this on my phone. Actually, check, check, check. My phone. on. Check, check. Here we go. Check this out. Now you're on. Yep. You're on. Okay, good. Praise God. Well, you know, when we were here, I say we, because I've been married to this beautiful girl for 35 years Yay! now. We just celebrated 35 years on June the 15th, but uh, she was with me in November. But November, uh, really was excited to share with you some of the initiatives that's, that are going on right now in the French-speaking world. That's really our mandate. Uh, we've uh, There's over 700 million French speakers in the, in the world, and we were excited about uh, right now getting ready to launch in the Congo and Benin and uh, really great things happening in Haiti. And then COVID-19 hit. And uh, how many of you know that every time the enemy tries to shut the church down, that all the church does is grow? Right. Amen. Amen. And so it's, it's, his, it's a historical fact. Uh, you just can go back to the Acts of the Apostles. And, and when the great persecution broke out against the church, the church grew. And so that's what we are deciding right now is we're going to grow. We're not going to let this uh, uh, shut us down. Uh, like I said, I've got some other pictures. Maybe we can share that later. But right now in Haiti, uh, there's, it's been a, a really, really tough time. Uh, we have 350 students uh, that are right now currently enrolled at Rama Haiti from all over the country. And uh, even prior to COVID, back in November and, and uh Really, for the last two years, they've been in and out of civil unrest. The country's been shut down on, on total lockdown, just like the United States has been and much of the world has been with COVID. They were already going through lockdown. All the banks were closed. All the businesses were closed. All the schools were closed for months and months on end. People were starving, and it was really tough. And a lot of that was just the civil unrest, the gang violence, and everything else. And then COVID hit, and they went into lockdown again. And so, obviously, as the world is telling us, stay home, you can't go anywhere, uh, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So we're going to find other ways to do that. And so what we've been really excited about right now is um, as we're speaking, we have a contingency plan that's, that's being implemented. Instead of uh, uh, bringing everybody to one central place in Haiti right now, we've actually launched nine many campuses throughout the entire nation uh, with our graduates who are leading those campuses. They've uh, let some of their church uh, facilities be used, and we're equipping them with fiber optic cable. Uh, we are, we've already distributed just this week 350 uh, uh, micro SD cards that have, each card has uh, like I think 48 hours of teaching on it, audiovisual material, plus 53 of Brother Hagen's uh, electronic books on it. And so uh, I'll tell you what, it's exciting because instead of uh, being shut down, yes. we're actually expanding. Right. And uh, we're really excited about it. So that's just a real quick thing. And uh, we're just believing God right now. The idea is to equip each one of these centers, not just with the fiber optic, but we need to get solar panels, battery inverters, uh, 52-inch TV screens, and a computer for each campus. It's going to be about $2,600 per campus. But with that, that's going to give us an opportunity, no matter what the devil throws at us, uh, whether it's uh, political unrest, whether it's a hurricane, or whether it's a, a pandemic, it doesn't matter. We're not going to uh, allow yeah. the enemy to stop us. Yeah. We're just going to move forward. So that's just a real quick... Uh, Awesome. What's going on? So yeah, so that's that's phenomenal. So uh, just as a church, you know, we've been talking about uh, hooking up, and and you know, even this year, uh, our finances have been up um, over not only over last year, but our giving is over I think two hundred percent over what it was last year. But I believe right now, the Bible talks about in the last days, the sower and the reaper are going to be walking hand in hand. And, and the Lord said, "Lift up your eyes; it's harvest time." And there's nothing better than to be sowing into that. So we wanted to sow as a church um, and then as individuals as well. Uh, we wanted to open that up opportunity. But just as a church, uh, from the dollars that have come in in stewardship, we wanted to take care. Of, I think you wrote the check for 20000 Is that correct? Yeah. 
to take care of other than so last night. Glory. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hey, last night cool. I was doing some investigation. Yeah. Uh, uh, what you guys had left and so on and so forth. And um, anyway, so we thought, man, that'll pretty well uh, yeah. knock most most all of it out. So um, that's awesome because they already praise got their God. computer. Yeah. Anyway, praise the Lord. So th- there, there's that, and then uh, and obviously that's not the limit to your vision and things that you got to do. That's just uh, you know how you got to kind of check things off. But I just believe, and you're going to get to hear from them today. So we want to do that, but we also want to take a moment right now, and so we're going to give that to them today. But if praise you God. would like to sow into, uh, you can earmark that on your offering envelope or online. There's a place for that. And I believe that there, I mean, you can just see the, the fruit and it, it's just, I, I think it's time right now to get, have seed in the ground. And there's something about, about sowing into what God's doing. So, but I want you to read that scripture and we're going to just pray this over, uh, over this couple. Yeah. So I had this verse, um, just come to me for you guys. And, um, it's second Thessalonians three, one, it says, furthermore, brethren, this is Paul talking, do pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed on spread rapidly and run its course and be glorified and triumph even as it has done with you. And so just praying, um, over you guys that the word of the Lord, I love that, that it'll run its full course. And I believe just sowing into you guys, allowing, I loved, we just loved your vision. We talked to the church a few weeks ago about just sewing and partnering and being able to just bless your guys' socks off. But that's our heart too, is just for for his, to make him known and for it to keep running its course in Haiti, all around the world. And like you said, Jesus is building his church. And um, we were just talking the other day, just how key it is to keep that mindset. Because so much what the enemy's wanting to do is to say, it's look at everything that's not happening. Look at everything that's not going on. But man, I just love being partnered and our church partnered with people who still believe God's building his church. His Amen. kingdom is expanding. This didn't take God by surprise. His word's still going forth. There's still people to reach. People are still being reached. Amen. And so it's ama- like amazing. You, it says 180. So let's just stand. Yeah. Put your hands yeah. out. We're just going to come awesome. together in agreement this morning for this couple and their, their feet. Father, thank you for these beautiful feet. We thank just you, we bless them in the name of Jesus. And I just, uh, I just hear the go, 180 go. I thank you just yes. for a, a, just a go. It's yes. going. It's got things thank you. moving. And, and Father, thank you for your word going, speeding yes. on, speeding, yeah. on. speeding on, running, speeding speed. on, running full at full speed. speed. Full Father, speed. thank you for thank the fruit you, and the harvest and the souls of the nations. Thank Father, you, for your glory. Yes. For your yes. glory. Thank Father, you, I thank you for every seed and every every person here this morning that, you, that, that for the, the great and multiplied uh, harvest uh, and, and just Hallelujah. a return. Thank you. But, the, but Father, I thank you for what what great return would be greater than a financial return. Father, a heart for the nations, yes. a heart that just thank so you, is overfill, overflowing Hallelujah. with your love, you, uh, and, and, and um, eyes you, to see. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, and eyes just eyes to see yes. as you see, Father. Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you for a wide open door of utterance. Every place they set their foot, both in Benin and in Haiti, Father, and and all of the French-speaking world, we thank you for a wide open door of utterance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, uh, you guys can be seated, and we're going to receive our tithes and offerings right now. If uh, you're giving, you can come up front and give, and... Um, and then Brother Ken is going to take it from there. So just tithes and offerings, uh, and then also um, if you're wanting to give to that, that would be awesome. And we'll just take about 60 seconds here.
God is so good. He's faithful. And he's ruling right now. He's got a plan. He's authoring. Oh, I'm so thankful for it. I just thank you that we would be able to hear this morning his plan and, and be a part of his story. Amen. Brother Ken, will you come? Yes, praise God. Good. Thanks, brother. Pretty exciting. I'm going to grab this pulpit here. Wow, that's, that is pretty incredible. You know what? Um, I started preaching when I was 17 years old. You can be seated, and, and um, we've had the privilege of being able to be in the ministry quite a few years. And uh, I think this morning, that's, that's, that's uh, in all these years, that's the biggest offering anyone's ever given to the ministry. So, yeah. So it's a historic day today. How many of you like hist- to make history? Yeah, you don't want to just read history. You want to make history. And uh, that's what we believe is, is happening. So I'm really excited to be with you this morning for so many reasons. And, uh, you know, it's been an interesting, interesting time that we've been living in. And uh, we have had the opportunity, I believe that no matter what, again, like I said, no matter what the enemy throws at you, we can always see God take what the enemy meant for destruction and he turns it for his glory. And so uh, on a personal level, my wife and I have been obligated to stay home uh, for like five months. And so we kind of made the best of it. I mean, it was kind of awesome to sleep in our own bed. I can't remember uh, how many times, I mean... In so many years, we've never had that opportunity. So that was cool. But also, uh, just in the midst of all of that, we've seen the ministry moving forward. And so we wanted to give you just a couple quick praise reports on that. And then I I believe I have a word that's going to be a source of encouragement and strength to us today. How many of you like to be encouraged? You like to be strengthened? So uh, that's what we're going to do. And, you know, I'm so thankful for your partnership uh, with Nations 180. Uh, Like Pastor Nate said, Nations 180 is because we believe that God wants to help nations do a 180-degree turn. He wants to change nations, turn them around. And so really our vision is to facilitate church planning movements, establish ministry training centers, specifically Rhema Bible Training Colleges, and then provide faith-building publications and media for every nation of the French-speaking world. I'm not going to take a whole lot of time to share about that because I did so in November, but the French-speaking world is huge. It's uh, just in Africa alone, there's 25 French-speaking nations, and so uh, just a lot to be done, and I'm excited to be part of it. How about you? And so, like I said, you've got a picture here that says you're changing nations in the face of COVID-19. Wanted to give you a real quick report. No matter what has been happening in the world, the church of Jesus Christ is alive is well, Jesus is building it, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We're on the winning team. We've read the back of the book. We win. Amen? And so we're not losers. We're winners. And so uh, during this whole time where we've been forced uh, by governments to stay home and not leave, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, we've still been leading the French uh, expansion task force. We have an international team, people from France, from Haiti, from uh, Canada, and we meet every week. We're strategizing. We're making plans to continue expanding in the nations of the French-speaking world. Rama Quebec has been going strong. We've been doing uh, courses by Zoom. Uh, that's really good. And uh, Rama Haiti, I already explained to you a little bit what's been happening there. It's been a tough time in Haiti. And I I have a little video clip just to give you an idea. We'll show that in just a second. But as I said, what's been, besides COVID, the gang activity has been what's really difficult because that's been gang uh, activity which is sponsored by political factions within the nation who have spent a lot of money, bought lots of weaponry, armed these gangs to really paying them to disrupt uh, uh, the nation. Um, And so I'm going to show you a real quick clip though, they've recently, there's nine of these big gangs that made an alliance and so uh, they decided hey, we're going to have a ceasefire, we're going to have a truce and we're going to kind of put pressure on the government to recognize us even as a political force and so here's um, just an idea of what's going on in some of the streets, I think we can play that video, Does does that video play or not? Yes, no? Oh, nope, that's okay, that's good though um You can see, though, these guys are heavily armed, 
I mean, these aren't, these aren't 22 caliber uh, rifles. These, these are, are large capacity magazines. And these guys are going through the streets, uh, making a lot of noise and, and uh, trying to disrupt things. And I think we've got another picture that we'll probably just have to skip because that's a video. We'll skip that and we'll go on to the next. Here is the location of the mini centers that you guys are paying for. Isn't that cool? I mean, we're, we're talking about the, the entire nation right now. We've got uh, strategic locations. We made sure each one of those locations is um, accessible to the fiber optic because what's happened in Haiti is for months and months, uh, power outages have been just a normal way of life for the majority of the country, uh, which is the, the other reason why I think we can look at the next picture. I think we have um, the equipment. This is what we're going to be doing. Solar panels, uh, re regulators, batteries, inverters. These uh, speakers here actually run on battery power, so even if there's a power outage, they'll continue working. Uh, router, computer, printer for all the students' uh, assignments and tests, etc., and then TV screens. And hey, as of this morning, that's all going to be taken care of. Yeah. That's good news. Good news. So praise God. I'm not sure if we had anything else on there, a couple pictures to show or not. Oh, here are the um, 350 micro SD cards. We got a great deal on them, 10 bucks. They're supposed to be 16 gigs, but they didn't have 16 gigs, so they gave us 32 instead. So that's a God thing also. Um, lots of work. So we've been able to deliver these, these packages all across the country to distribute the SD cards. And they have their master documents so they can make copies and distribute to all the students. And, and um, we won't go into too much detail there, but praise God, it's a done deal. So uh, continue to pray for Africa. We've got another shot here. I think that some of these that I showed back in November, uh, the Congo, 90 million Inhabitants, the largest French-speaking country in the world. We just had a meeting yesterday in uh, Broken Arrow with uh, Congolese that's helping us. Um, and um, we're just praying right now for the Congo because things are tough. Churches are still not able to meet. They're going to be negotiating with the government in, the, in this, this week. And they're hoping that by the, the end of August, they're going to start allowing churches to meet again. But that is a huge country. And uh, even with everything that's going on, though, we're really excited because we believe that what we're doing in Haiti is going to be a prototype for what we'll be able to do in Africa as well. So now we're already having discussions, maybe instead of just having one big location in Kinshasa, which has 12 million people, we're thinking about maybe opening four or five. So we're just going to do more. Amen. Amen. So continue to pray for the Congo. Uh, let me see what else. Yeah, we, this is a picture from back in July a year ago. We had 800 pastors and leaders come for three days of training, and they're begging us to start the Bible school there. Um, next shot, this is Benin. Looks like a key because we be, believe it's a key to West Africa. Uh, we've made several trips there already, and they are ready and waiting for us to come as well. So just want to remind you to keep praying for the people of Benin. We can skip on to the next picture there. Uh, this is... Um, the group of denominational leaders we met with, they oversee 8,000 churches in the country. In the middle, again, is Andy and Ruth Joseph. They are our coordinators for Rama Haiti, and they're helping us with the expansion team. And uh, again, I think I shared some of that prophecy with you back in November, uh, that when we first started Rama Haiti, the Spirit of God spoke strongly to us that God wanted to raise up the Haitians, not only to change their nation, but he was going to be sending them as missionaries into other parts of French-speaking Africa. And uh, we're seeing it come to pass, so it's awesome when God tells you something, and then uh, it actually happens, isn't it? And so, praise God. I think we, do we have another picture there? We can skip on to the next one as well. Uh, I think that's good for now. We can, we can leave it there. But j again, again, a great, big, huge thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your generosity. And uh, how many of you are ready to get into the Word a little bit this morning? I'm really excited about this message, and um, if you want to open your Bible with me, or your iPad, your iPhone, your paper Bible, if any of you still use those, and we're going to go to Matthew chapter 24 today, and I have good news. Message this morning is uh, titled, It's Not the End of the World. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, it's not the end of the world. That's good news, isn't it? 
Because I'll tell you what, uh, I like what Pastor Nate said, what you're uh, fed by is what you're led by, or something along those lines. There's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of voices out there right now. And uh, there are a lot of messages that are uh, being propagated right now. And a lot of the, what we see and a lot of what we hear could easily lead people to believe that, hey, it's all over. It's done. It's, uh, we're garners. This is, uh, I mean, let's, let's just uh, wrap it all up here. We're, it, it, it's no use. It's hopeless. How many of you have run into some hopeless people in the recent months? You know, I, I don't know about you. I, I'm really excited about being right here in Alma uh, because I sense there's another spirit here. And especially in, in, in this church. I know if I was living in Alma, Arkansas, I know where I'd be in church every Sunday. I'd be right here. Uh, but there's another spirit. There's a, there's a spirit of faith that's palpable, that, that is, is tangible, that when you walk into these doors and, and during praise and worship, uh, we're, not, we're not worshiping this morning with a bunch of defeated people. We're worshiping with a bunch of more than conquerors. And so I love that. But I have to be honest, that's not that way everywhere that I've been in recent months. There's a lot of despair. There's a lot of discouragement. There are a lot of people that are really uh, being motivated and controlled by fear. And uh, there are a lot of people that are convinced that it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. And even as Pastor Nate shared some of these scriptures about the spirit of Antichrist, we know that the spirit of Antichrist has been at work in the earth uh, for, se for centuries, millennial. Okay? And, and we know that the spirit of Antichrist is going to continue to be at work in the earth uh, for years to come. But we have some really good news that the spirit of God is also at work in the earth. And greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. So if we look at Matthew chapter 24, it's a really interesting passage because we see that Jesus, first of all, uh, and I don't, I don't think it's on the screen right now. I'll back up a little bit in Matthew 24 and start with the first verse. And uh, we can read that together. Because I think it's going to give us some really important insight into um, some of the way that you and I and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we need to uh, react and respond in, in these days to, to the news to what's going on in the world, to, uh, to the, uh, the current events and future events. What's our attitude need to be? What, what kind of uh, position do we need to take? Uh, do we need to go uh, uh, buy a, a bunch of canned goods and, and build a bunker and go uh, hunker down because we're all going to die soon? Or are we called to be influencers? Are we called uh, to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth? Are we called to be an army that's conquering and taking territory? Or are we called to be victims who are, who are just uh, trying to, to, to survive? I'll tell you what, I want to take territory. And so I believe it is not the end of the world. I'm not saying the end of the world's not coming because it is. But I don't believe we're there yet. And I don't believe the church is done yet. Look at your neighbor and say, we're not done yet. But Jesus said something in Matthew chapter 24. And again, there are a lot of different people that uh, can interpret Matthew 24 in a lot of different ways. And I, I don't want to get too deep into eschatology and the doctrine of the last days and, and et cetera, et cetera. There are a lot of different opinions. Not everybody agrees, even amongst some of the greatest theologians. But so I want to really key in and hone in on, on mostly and especially the attitudes that Jesus uh, uh, is, is underlining in this passage and, and kind of the, the, the demeanor that we as Christians are, are meant to take as we enter into uh, these, these events and as we see certain things which Jesus talked about unfold before us, what's the attitude, what's the posture that we need to be uh, uh, addressing these things with? Amen? We're conquerors. We're winners. Amen. But Jesus said, and he went out and he departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you that not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. 
Now, you got to remember, he's talking to his disciples who are Jews, and uh, they are in Jerusalem. They are at the, the site of the temple. This is the ultimate uh, place of pilgrimage and the ultimate place of pride for anyone of the Jewish nation. I mean, this is Solomon's temple. This was a temple that, that took decades and decades and, and billions of dollars really to, to build. I mean, if you look at the, the, the translation of, of uh, how much it cost to build the temple in, in modern terms, it's astronomical. And so this is the pride of the nation. And Jesus, you know, it said, yep, you see that? There's not one stone that's going to be left unturned. I mean, this isn't exactly feel-good kind of news. And it's kind of like you take a trip to, to, to Washington, D.C., and you want to show off the, the nation's capital, and there's the White House, and there's the Capitol building, here's the Washington Monument. And, you know, and Jesus says, yep, there's not one stone that's going to be left unturned. It's all going to be wrecked. It's like, okay. And so, you know, uh, all right, Jesus, I'm hearing you. And they come back to him, though. And in verse 3, it says, And now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Okay, so, all right. I could just kind of guess that it's maybe a little disturbing. It might be a little unsettling for them to hear that. Okay, so they're going to come and ask him some questions in private. And they tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So they want to know about, okay, uh, I hear you. All this is going to be wrecked. It's all going to be destroyed. So tell us now, what are, what's the going to be the sign that you're going to come to rule and to reign and, and that the end of the age is going to come about? And so Jesus goes uh, and, and he starts to answer the question. It's a good question. It's a valid question. And Jesus gives them the answer. And he said to him in verse 4, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name. Okay, many will come in my name saying, and what are they going to say? Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for all of these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, but it's not the end of the world. Everybody say it's not the end of the world. And so I love this. We're already starting off with, again, the attitude that Jesus is, is sharing with his disciples. He says, first of all, don't be deceived. In other words, there's a, a high possibility that if you are not careful, you will be deceived because you're going to be letting the wrong person breathe on you. Okay? And so Jesus says, don't do that. Okay? Don't, don't be deceived because there's going to be a lot of deception going on uh, in, these, in these days. And, and that didn't, that's not reserved for 2020. Uh, I mean, shortly after these words came out of his mouth, it was already starting. You know, the first century was full of, of, of false doctrine and Gnosticism and all kinds of problems. And, uh, and so Jesus says, don't, don't let anybody deceive you. And then he also said, see that you are not troubled. In other words, don't worry. Don't give place to deception and don't give place to worry. So, I mean, we could stop right there, go home and say, you know what? Jesus already told us how to live in these last days. We need to guard our hearts against deception and we just have to make sure that we don't ever worry. We should never be troubled by what we see or what we hear uh, by all of the news cycles, by all the social media, by all the stuff that's going on, we should not allow ourselves to be troubled. We have to remember who we are. We have to remember whose we are. We need to remember who is in us, and we need to remember that we are on a mission which is destined to succeed. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So again, look at somebody and say, it's not the end of the world. Here's another thing, because I know, and maybe not in Arkansas, but in some places, even in Quebec, you know, rumors are, are going around, and people are asking, well, are we in the tri Great Tribulation? And, and I have, newsflash, newsflash, this is not fake news, this is not the Great Tribulation. Okay? This is not the Great Tribulation. Can we say it together? This is not the Great Tribulation. Now, there is tribulation. There are difficult times, and I've got a list of verses for you just real quickly. 2 Timothy 3.1 says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. 
So, and, and perilous times, uh, are, again, are not uh, unique to the 21st century. The 20th century was one of the bloodiest centuries that the world has ever known. I mean, you think about it, two world wars, millions of people that were killed, uh, the Spanish flu, all kinds of stuff that was going on. And, and so there have been a lot of things going on for a long, long time. John 16, verse 33, Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. All right, I know we don't love to think about that. We don't love to talk about it, but it's just fact of life in this world. We're going to have tribulation. There's going to be some difficult times. But what did he say? Don't get depressed. Don't get down. Don't be troubled about it. Be of good cheer. Everybody say, I'm of good cheer. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In Revelation 7, 14, so he said to them, these are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation. So right now we're in perilous times. Right now we're having difficult times. But there is a day coming where there will be a great tribulation. And again, it's going to last seven years. It's what some people refer to as Daniel's uh, 70th week. Uh, there was, you know, 69 of the, of the weeks of, of, of judgment upon the nation of Israel have already been fulfilled and, and all of that took place even with the Babylonian captivity and everything else. But there was a time when the clock was, was stopped. The age of grace was ushered in. The age of the church was ushered in. And that's where we are right now. We are here preaching the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, but there is coming a day when that clock's going to start again, and the time of Jacob's trouble, the time of the 70th week of Daniel, it's going to take place. There's going to be seven years uh, of tribulation like the world has never known. I believe with all of my heart that you and I will not be here during that time. Now, some people don't agree with me. I believe the church is going to be taken out. We're going to see a couple of verses about that today even. I believe we're going to be raptured out of here. We're going to be taken out of here. And until that happens, the Antichrist, the man of sin, as we're going to see, he can't come to set up his kingdom on the earth. And that, those seven years of tribulation can't really take place as long as you and I are here. So this is really kind of an encouraging message for us today. Amen? At least I hope it is. How many of you are feeling encouraged? Yeah. Matthew 24, 21, For then there will be great tribulation, such as not has been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor uh, has ever shall be. So we're not there yet. Right now we're just experiencing what Jesus referred to as the beginning of birth pangs. Now I've never experienced birth pangs. Praise God. <laughs> My wife has... Five, on five occasions, she's given birth to five children, and I have accompanied her during birth pangs. And I know that it must not be a very pleasant experience. And all the women said, amen. amen. And we're so thankful for all of our wives who have labored and given birth. But Jesus said in these last days, it's going to be like a woman who's in labor. It's going to be like a woman who's having contractions. And, you know, normally as that process is taking place, the contractions get harder and the contractions become more frequent and closer together as the time comes uh, uh, for the birth to take place. And I believe that's what's happening right now. I believe that, you know, the earth has been in, in labor, so to speak. Uh, we've, and we're seeing the, the birth pangs. that They're getting, they're getting harder. They're getting uh, uh, closer together. And uh, you know what? It's not pleasant. Those things are going to happen. Jesus said it must, these things must take place. And, and let's just look real quickly what, what kind of things must take place. Verse 7 uh, we know that there's going to be international conflict. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We've already seen that. Uh, it's been happening for centuries. It's happening right now. There are wars and there are rumors of wars. Verse 8, famine, pestilences, and earthquakes. Again, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. And these are the beginning of sorrows or the, or the beginning of birth pangs. And again, we've seen a lot of that. In, in Haiti, in, back in 2010, I think it was, we had terrible, terrible 
earthquake that hit Haiti. And there have been earthquakes in many places that have killed many people. Uh, But again, that's not the end of the world. It's just birth pangs. Uh, persecution of believers. Then they will deliver you up to tribulations and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Again, we don't love to think about that, but the truth of the matter is that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has, since its inception, gone through seasons and periods of persecution. And there have been many, many martyrs who have given their life for their faith in Christ. And you know what? That will continue. There's, it's happening today as we speak in certain nations. There are people today who are in prison. There are people today who may lose their life because of their faith in Christ. And I'm grateful and thankful that here in the United States of America today, uh, August the 2nd, 2020, uh, that that's not happening on an official level. Now, I believe we need to be careful. Again, we don't need to be fearful, but I do believe we need to pray for our nation. I do believe that we need to uh, uh, exercise our rights to vote and do everything we can to make sure it stays that way. Amen. I don't think we should take our liberty here for granted. Uh, We're a baby country compared to most nations of the world, and uh, we've seen it happen other places. It could happen here. I don't believe it has to, and I don't believe it will if the church does its job. Amen. But persecution of believers, it's a real thing. The abandonment of the faith, verse 10, and then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. We know that. In some places, we've already seen it. And we've seen uh, uh, the church that at one point in time had great influence in certain nations, today has very little influence. Where I live in Quebec, there's six-tenths of 1% evangelical uh, Christians. And I know and even in the United States right now with COVID, there are a lot of churches who, uh, even as, as uh, they start to come back together, the average that we've been hearing is about 40% of the congregations have been coming back. Um, you know what? You are an above-average church. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, you're above average. How many of you like being above average? False prophets and deception. Verse 11, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. A lawlessness and cold-heartedness. How many of you have seen a little bit of lawlessness in our, in our land recently, huh? Uh, Matthew 24, 12, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. So these are things that Jesus calls birth pangs. It's not the end of the world. Everybody say it's not the end of the world. Okay? So we shouldn't be all up in arms or all upset, uh, uh, and, and we should not be depressed, discouraged, or disoriented when we see those things happen. We need to realize that God has a plan, and His plan is going to be fulfilled. We're going to finish our course. We're not going to let our course finish us. And so Jesus is going to come. I believe he's going to come and he's going to take the church out. Then I believe there's going to be seven years of tribulation. And after that seven years of tribulation, Jesus will actually come and return to the earth. We will return with him and rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And that's going to be awesome. And then there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. So we know that these things are coming. But again, so over, over the, the course of church history, there have been too many people who have either gotten off track, they've been deceived, or they've been troubled, or they thought, oh, this is the great tribulation, or oh, we're all going to die, or blah, 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 blah. Or, or they've gone... To, to other extremes, and they've started to, to try to predict, okay, well, well Jesus is going to come back on, on September the 27th of this year. And I remember once uh, we were in France for about a month, and, and uh, we came back in November, and I believe, and then I was going through a stack of mail, because we'd been gone for a month, or, or we were gone for longer than a month. But anyway, all of a sudden, I, I yelled out from my little office, I said, Tanya, I said, we missed the rapture. I got a book right here. He says, 88 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming in 1988. It was 1988. And, uh, but it was September 27th or something. So I, I'm getting it. I'm reading it in November. I'm saying, oh, man, we missed it. <laughs> well, you know what? 
Jesus said, and further on in this chapter, he said, but of the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father, my Father only. So it's, it's, it's absolutely useless to try to predict when is he going to come, when it, what is the date, and I think this is really important, and that's why I put it on the slide. I put the question, calendar or conditions? I really believe this, and this is what I want us to grab a hold of today. Because in our demeanor, as, as we live in these last days, we need to realize that we have a whole lot more to do with when Jesus comes back than, you, than we might know. You know, I really don't believe, it's my conviction that Jesus did, didn't say, even though he is all-knowing and he has foreknowledge, that he didn't just say, okay, uh, let's, let's come back on this date, and, and it's going to be September 15th or September 23rd. No, it's whenever the conditions are met, that's when I'm coming. Okay? And, uh, and if, for instance, in Quebec, with all this COVID stuff, they said, all right, the government said, as soon as these five conditions are met, you can start uh, leaving your home, you can start opening your businesses, and they had a long list. The curb has to be uh, uh, going down, and the, the number of hospitalizations has to reach this amount, and da-da-da-da-da. As soon as those five conditions, so they didn't give us a date, they gave us conditions. And they said, once those conditions are met... You can, you can start uh, relaxing a little bit, reopening the, the economy, etc. And I believe it's the same thing. Jesus is coming, but there are two conditions which must be fulfilled before the end of the world is going to take place, before the great tribulation starts and everything else. So let's look at those just real briefly in this, in this passage. In, in Matthew 24, 13, Jesus continues, and he says, But he who endures to the end shall be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. Everybody say, this gospel will be preached. And it's not just going to be preached. It's going to be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. Now, that word nations is ethnos. And a lot of people believe that he's speaking here of, of the families of the earth, the different ethnic groups of the earth. There are thousands and thousands of, of, of uh, ethnic groups who've never yet once heard the, the name of Jesus. They are still uh, waiting for the church to bring the gospel to them. Now, not everybody agrees with that, but according, some people believe that, the, that this is what Jesus is speaking of. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Everybody saying, then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. So there's two things that are, that are spoken of here. Number one, the gospel's going to be preached to every nation before the end comes. But then... After that, when you see the abomination of desolation, that's the moment when the Antichrist is going to go into the temple, declare himself God, and uh, we're really going to be in, in the real, genuine, great tribulation. Okay, those are the two conditions. The gospel we, will be preached to every nation. How many of you believe that the church is not finished yet? That's why when you guys gave that offering today, you, want, you know what? You're helping to fulfill the great commission. You're helping to, to uh, fulfill the conditions which are necessary. Because here in James 5, 7, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the f precious fruit of the earth. So what is, what is he waiting for? Why doesn't he just come? Why doesn't Jesus just, just say, Okay, I've had it. Father, I'm going now. You know? Blow that trumpet. Here we come. We're closing this thing out because he's waiting for something. What is he waiting for? He's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. Everybody say he's waiting for the precious fruit. In other words, there are more people that still need to be saved. He's waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You, you, rain, you also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. 2 Peter 3.9 says something similar. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness. And if you go back in this, this chapter, he's talking about in the end days, there will be mockers. There are people going to make fun of Christians, saying, hey, you know, you've been saying since our fathers that, that, that the end of the world is coming and that Jesus is coming and all this. Where is he? He's not here yet. He goes, no, he's not slow. He's not slack according, uh, uh, concerning his promise, but he's long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So why isn't Jesus here? Why hasn't he come yet? Because I believe he's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. 
Amen? There's more souls that need to be saved. And that's why we are still here, I believe. Amen? And once that's done, once the gospel is preached, once we have fulfilled the Great Commission, then, and only then, the man of sin or, or the Antichrist is going to be revealed. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come. Everybody say, that day will not come. Unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed. Now, that word falling away is the word apostasy. And some people think, oh, what's going to happen is the church is going to get weaker and weaker and everyone's going to fall away from the faith. But that also can be translated a great departure. And yes, some people commit apostasy and they depart from the faith. But many people believe, I believe, that this departure is not just a departure from the faith. I believe it's the day that the church is going to depart from the earth. There's going to be a great departure because let's look what this says. Let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. But look at this verse five. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, and he who now restrains, everybody say he who restrains, will do so until he is what? Taken out of the way. I believe this is the church. The church is restraining the, 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 the man of sin. The spirit of Antichrist, like Pastor Nate shared already, is already at work. But he cannot possess the man of sin. And, and he cannot take his place and, and do everything he's going to do during the great tribulation as long as the church is here restraining him. We have a restraining order against the devil. Amen? And so it's our responsibility. Again, we're talking about posture. We're talking about attitude. We're not a wimpy, weak, uh, defeated church. We are the victorious church of the Lord Jesus Christ who has the name of Jesus, who has the blood of Jesus, who has the light of God's word, who has the sword of the spirit. And we are standing in opposition to the powers of darkness. And we are saying, no, you cannot have this nation. No, you cannot have this world. No, you You cannot keep us from going into all the world and preaching the gospel. You try to crush us, we're just going to rise up and we're going to grow tentacles. You try to kill us, we're just going to get bigger. We're going to get stronger. And that's what we're going to do. And so we're not defeated. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the church. Jesus is not coming back for a defeated, wimpy church. Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. Amen? I'm glad to be part of a glorious church. Hallelujah. And then, after we're taken out of the way, the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath, the breath of his mouth. There's the breath again, isn't it? He's going to consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Hallelujah. So what are we going to do about this? Just two things, just to end with this. Just a couple things that you and I need to do. Number, number one, and we see this in Matthew 24, 13, but he who endures... To the end shall be saved. And then this gospel will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. So really what Jesus is telling us is we need to have patient endurance and we need to preach. What are we supposed to do? We're not supposed to hide. We're not supposed to just get on Facebook and post a bunch of junk and say, you know, I don't like you and I don't like them and I hate this person, I hate that person. And uh, you know what? We are not warring against flesh and blood. And, and those who are on the other side of the political spectrum of wherever you are, and I could probably have a good idea where most of you are, but you know what? I don't want to make that assumption, but no matter where you might land in the political uh, uh, scheme of things, uh, uh, think about the person who is polar opposite. Think about the person who is against everything you're for and for everything you're against. And you know what? Here's still the truth of the matter is Jesus came and died for that person. And so we don't, they're not our enemies. They are our target for preaching the gospel. Amen? And so in Romans chapter 5, verse 3, so we're going to endure. 
But endurance is not just passive. And, and, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance or endurance, and perseverance character and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given us. So patient endurance is not passive. So we're not supposed to be passive. Everybody say, I'm not passive. Say, we're going on the offensive. So what are we supposed to do as we persevere? I'm not going to take time to go into detail, but just really quickly, I've got a few verses here. We need to persevere in doing the will of God, according to Hebrews 10, 36. For you have need of endurance so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. So God has a will for your life. He has a plan for your life. And I don't care how bad it gets, we need to persevere and endure in doing that will. We need to persevere in bearing fruit, as we see in Luke 8, 15. We go on and we can say we need to persevere in doing good, according to Romans 2, 7. We need to persevere in running our race, the race that is set before us. With our eyes fixed on Jesus, we need to run with perseverance. Everybody say, I'm going to run with perseverance. We need to persevere in keeping his commandments, according to Revelations 14, 12. And we need to persevere in doing signs, wonders, and miracles. I'll tell you what, that's what we need to persevere in. We need, the church, more than ever before, we need to be a supernatural church. Right now, we've got COVID-19, and everybody's uh, like, oh, when is the, one of the doctors going to come up with a, a, a vaccine for it? When are they gonna, you know what? We don't know. They might not ever. And, and I'm, not, I'm not against doctors. We're going to pray for doctors. We're going to pray for nurses. But today, it's COVID-19. Uh, 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 and next week or next month, it could be some other disease that they've never heard of. And we need to be ready, no matter what the enemy throws at us. We need to be the ones so that the governments are coming to the church and saying, what do we do? We need to know that, that the word of God did not change with COVID-19. And these signs will accompany those who believe. And one of those signs is they'll lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So we need to be the answer and the solution. Amen? And then we need to persevere in prayer. Continue earnestly in praying, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. So we're called to endure patiently. And that means it's a very active thing. We're doing the will of God. We're running our race, et cetera, et cetera. And then we need to just keep preaching the gospel. And I love this. We're going to end with this passage in Acts chapter 1. Again, the disciples are asking Jesus, Lord, when is it? And this is, we can look at this on the screen, I believe. Uh, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. So again, this is the the natural tendency for people is to want to know. I want to know a date. Tell me what day this is going to happen. Tell me what year this is going to happen. Tell me what month this is going to happen. And again, Jesus said, it's not for you to know those things. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not for you to know the times or the dates. Now, we can know the seasons, and we know that according to Thessalonians that, 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 that it's not going to come upon us. This day's not going to come upon us like those in darkness as a surprise. We're going to know that the coming of the Lord is near. We're going to sense in our spirits that, you know what, it's getting really close. It's getting really close. It's getting close. But forget trying to pick, pinpoint a date. That's not what Jesus said to do. So what did he say to do? I love this because it's not for you to know times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but, everybody say, but, but, but what? But you shall receive power. Don't worry about the times. Don't worry about the seasons. But you shall receive power. And what are you going to do with that power? You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, and even to the end of the earth, which goes right along with the Great Commission we already mentioned, which goes along with Matthew 28, where Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you Always, even to the end of the age. It's not the end of the world. The end of the world is coming, 
But before the end of the world comes, the church needs to continue to patiently endure and persevere in doing the will of God and preaching the gospel with power. And I'll tell you what, that we should be excited because I believe that it's close. And these are exciting days. And so if we could just stand together and pray. Father, we thank you. I hope this has encouraged you this morning. Just to know that, you know what? Yep, these are def- difficult times. These are troubling times. These are, are, are times of, of birth pangs and uh, These are labor pains, but you know what? Jesus is Lord. He is on the throne. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are more than conquerors in him. Amen? And so, Father, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus for this congregation. I thank you for Beyond Church. I thank you, Lord, that this church has a revelation like never before of the fact, Lord God, that they are called to endure, called to persevere, called to preach, called to hold back and restrain darkness. Lord God, that they are light and they are salt. They are a preserving factor here in the earth, here in this nation. And I thank you, Father God, that we have influence. We have a role to play. Lord, Lord, that we can actually look for and hasten the coming of the Lord. Lord, we can, according to 2 Peter, we can hasten your coming. We can make it in, in, in a way that you come quicker because we get the job done quicker. Because we get the gospel preached quicker. Because we reach more nations. And we do it with more power. And we do it with more authority. And we thank you, Lord, that you're with us even to the end of the age. And so, Father, we thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, for an infilling of your spirit, an infilling of your power. Lord God, I thank you that even today, Lord, that we open our hearts and our minds up to you to be filled afresh with with fresh fire from heaven. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And if you're here this morning... Because I, I don't ever like to let a, a Sunday morning go by without giving an opportunity, just in case there's someone here this morning and you've never yet given your life to Jesus, if you were to die right now, if, if, if leaving this building you were to drop dead and your spirit were to leave your body, you don't know for sure 100% that you would uh, uh, go and spend eternity with Christ in heaven. I have good news for you. That is this. But if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised from the, de- from the dead, you shall be saved. Salvation is a free gift that we can't earn. And today, if you'll just open your heart to him, uh, you can receive the free gift of eternal life. So I'm just going to count to three. And if you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus, or maybe you have in the past, but you've, you've kind of walked away from him, and today you want to come back to Jesus, or you want to give your life to him for the first time, I'm going to count to three. Be bold. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before the Father. But if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before the Father. So I'm going to count to three. And if you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, but you want to do that today, just raise your hand. Who would want to give their life to Jesus today? One, two, three. Is there anybody? Maybe you already have. But if not, you can go ahead and raise your hand. And so, Father, I thank you. Lord, I don't see any hands this morning, but Lord, I believe that in this place, we have a band of believers who are wanting to fulfill your plans and purposes in these last days. Lord, to go beyond, to to love you and to love others, to, to, to know you and to make you known. And so, Father, I thank you that, Lord, this is a great day to be alive. This is a great day to be a believer, that this is a great day, Lord Jesus, for your church to take its place and do what you've called us to do. We thank you for it. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we love you and we appreciate you. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not the end of the world. The best is yet to come. Something to do. I don't know. Am I? Yeah. We got something to do. I love the application. I think if you just can go back and the last little bit persevere, right? Persevere in doing this and doing this and doing this. You got some, we got some stuff to be doing. And I'm telling you, there's things that we got to be persevering in and preaching the gospel. Guys, more than ever before, the gospel, what we're dealing with, what we do here on this earth, God does an inside job. 
He tells us not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed, you know, from the inside out by the renewing of our mind. Listen, that's how even in this world that God, God works. He doesn't work by conforming or constraining, but he does it by transforming from the inside out. Amen. I'm so excited about that. Tonight, 6.30, come back. Uh, uh, we're excited to hear uh, Brother Ken again. Uh, I'm telling you, the days in which we live, never a better time to be invested in and hear what God has to say because it will produce application to your days. And let me tell you, here's what's the deal about application is fulfillment comes when you're doing what you were created to do. You can't find it in anything or a TV show or a boat, but you can find it in the right place at the right time doing what God's asked you to do. Amen. And we'll see you tonight, 630. God bless you.